Hello, this is Gareth from the iMoot team. It's my great pleasure to welcome Jazz Winter Singh to talk about using H5P with Moodle. It comes from Moodle World, who do uh, news and blogs and things. And I'll, I'll thank you on behalf of the iMoot team for putting together this presentation and for your time. Thank you, Jazz Winter. Hello, everyone, and good morning, good evening, good night. So I'm not sure what is the time zone you are in, but still a warm welcome to all of you to this presentation session. And uh, today we are going to discuss about how to use H5P with Moodle. Thank you, Trish. Uh, so now I'm starting the presentation. And in this presentation, we, we are going to cover about uh, what is H5P and the major advantages of using H5P, how it can be used with Moodle and uh, how you can share and reuse the H5P activities and what do you mean by the content types in H5P and what are the top 10 H5P content types which are best to use for Moodle teachers. I hope you will enjoy the session. If you have any questions, you can ask me after the presentation. And this is my first time I am presenting in the iMood, so please Please, please, apologies if I make any mistakes. I hope you will enjoy the session. A brief background about myself. Uh, I'm a passionate Moodle user in India. And uh, basically, I'm impressed about the powers of Moodle and how I can use it to improve the education system in India. In 2014, I wrote a book on Moodle named How to Use Moodle for 2.7. And in 2016, I organized the first Moodle Moot in India. And after that Moodle Moot, I started the blog on Moodle named MoodleWorld.com. So what I do, <laughs> definitely not the picture on the left hand side, the children with the laptop, like mostly people are thinking about myself, but uh, instead I used to play with the trains in my full time job. and. I used to do Moodle things in the nights, especially. Now, here are some few questions about uh, H5P to all of you. How many of you are aware about H5P project? Can you please tell me? No one? Ah, OK. OK, little. Yeah, Gareth is, okay, great, so, good, okay, good, so, mostly the audience is uh, a fairly, uh, have a fair knowledge about uh, H5P, but not in-depth knowledge, so, and, uh, Okay, all the three questions are answered with this one, I think. Mostly no one is using H5P with Moodle. Okay, so let's proceed further. H5P is rapidly becoming the best platform for creating interactive content. And the best thing about that is you can create the content right from your browser. You do not need any special editor or any other software, any plugin, you just need a browser with internet connection and you can create the interactive content anywhere. So what is H5P? H5P is the short form for HTML5 package. The H5P project is a free and open source content collaboration framework. It is based on JavaScript. The goal of this H5P project is to make it easy for everyone to create, share, and reuse interactive content. It can be used to create interactive videos, presentations, quizzes, games, timelines, etc. H5P is designed to have a minimum of platform specific code and a minimum of backend code. So, all the code mostly resides in the H5P package files, which you can download and use on any platform. The major advantages of H5P are 
it is easy to create HTML5 content as I stated earlier, right from your browser window. You can easily share the content across any H5 capable website. You can easily reuse the existing content and modify it to meet your requirements. The content will be mobile friendly and you can experience the same content on all the kind of devices like computers, smartphones, and tablets, etc. H5P is distributed under the MIT license and it is completely free and open source technology. It supports X API, that is Tinken API, and it is also supported by a community like Moodle. Although the community is not uh, good like Moodle, but still it is growing. And since it is a new project, so it will take some time to grow it up to the level of Moodle. It supports three major platforms. Two are the CMSs and Moodle is the only LMS which is supported natively by the H5P team. The other two CMSs are WordPress and Drupal. If you are going to use H5P for Moodle, then please do not use H5P for your exams. You can use it to create some interactive activities for practice sessions, but don't use it for the exams. Because uh, it is, it can be possible to cheat for the H5P interactions and uh, the persons with technical knowledge can obtain the full score without knowing the correct answers. So please do not use it for any exams. There is a Moodle plugin available for uh, using the H5P activities in Moodle. The name of the plugin is Interactive Content H5P. It can be downloaded from the Moodle plugins directory. After installing the plugin, uh, the plugin will download and install all the recommended content types. Uh, I will come on to the content types afterwards. In order to create any new content of H5P, you need to have some content types installed on your Moodle. When you create an H5P activity in Moodle, there is a field to set the grade for that activity. And when the student performs that activity, uh, the grades for that will be recorded in the Moodle gradebook. That is a um, question which is asked several times on H5P forums that uh, are Moodle activities graded uh, by using H5P and uh, the answer is yes. It transmits the data through X API. Now, how you can share and reuse the H5P activities you have created for some platform. You can easily download the file which will end up in the .h5p package uh, extension. You can upload it to any new platform wherever you want it to use. And then while uploading, there will be the options to customize that activity. And once done, you are ready to go. So what are the content types in H5P? Uh, content types are different kind of small activities which behave differently and uh, which provide you to uh, create some certain activities like there are audio recorders you can create multiple choice activities you can create presentations you can create interactive videos you can create timelines and there are as on date there are 33 different content types which can be uh, downloaded from the h5p library they are updated to a new version very frequently. And uh, if you have a content created for the previous version, then the content will not be automatically upgraded. You need to upgrade the, you need to upgrade the button. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you need to click the upgrade button to upgrade the content to the new, new version. You can do it from the Moodle H5P settings uh, page. Now we came to the main point of uh, the presentation, the top 10 H5P content types for Moodle teachers. The first one for this is the interactive video. I think uh, most of you have been using YouTube videos or any kind of videos within your courses. But 
what if you can use some kind of interactive videos so that there are some interactive elements which are appearing on the screen during the playback of the video and uh, so that you can have some interaction with the student while watching the video it can grab the uh, students attentions in a short span of time and uh, there are different question types available for uh, use with h5p which you can use within the interactive video the other thing is uh, it allows the bookmarking facility so that the students can skip to a specified section of the video whenever they want to watch that particular section the demo is available through this link you can go and have a look on the demo of this interactive video basically it will look uh, like this the interaction element will be shown like uh, on, within the video and the student needs to check and then proceed further the interaction elements are shown by this dots over the presentation sorry over the video timeline so let's proceed to the second content type it is the course presentation the course presentation is a html5 based presentation it includes a series of slides which can have the videos audios questions and urls within the slides the students can experience uh, interactive learning material and test their knowledge and memory during the course presentations you can easily edit the presentations using a visivig uh, authoring tool which is available in your browser it the presentation may look like this uh, if you observe carefully then here is a download link on all the h5p activities which can be used to download from one platform and if you want to stop downloading then you can do it easily through the settings page but it is there so that anybody can download and reuse it the third one is the drag and drop content type it is again a html5 based drag and drop question type it can be used to make engaging challenges this allows the creative teachers to create different forms of drag and drop using the web browser only you can use text as well as images as the draggable alternatives and it supports one to one one to many many to one and many to many interactions it can be used simply to test the students knowledge on a given topic so it will look like maybe this one i grabbed all these examples from h5p demo content and you can see that uh, there are the names of the fruits written and you need to drag and drop over the top of the fruits images the fourth one comes on the list is the find multiple hotspots or find the hotspot this is a question type it allows to create an image based test the student has to find the correct spots on the image and click over that spot the students are provided with the relevant feedback based on where they click and as a teacher you can select how many correct hotspots need to be found before marking the question as complete you can have any number of hotspots on a single image or you can use only a single hotspot also so it will look like this uh, like find the variables out of these pictures Uh, and uh, the student will get the feedback like this so now let's come to the fifth content type that is the image juxtaposition image juxtaposition is a content type which can be used to uh, compare two images interactively you can have a slider between two images either a horizontal or vertical and you can set the starting position and level your images it can be used as a great tool to tell your image series like maybe before and after floods or before and after this particular season for example like this the visible and near infrared light the student can drag this slider to left and right and observe the 
images. Now let's proceed to the next content type, which is guess the answer. The very basic and very simple to use can be created in few seconds and it can be easily used to create challenges for students to guess an answer based on a picture. Just upload a picture and add a, add a suitable description and the solution for the image. Student gets the answer and press the bar underneath to reveal the correct answer. And if they are correct, they will get the feedback. Otherwise, they will get the wrong feedback. Like this. What kind of berries are these? If he will reveal the correct answer like here. Then comes the audio recorder. Audio recorder is simply HTML5 based recorder, which can be used to record the student's voice and playback um, afterwards. This can be used for especially open-ended questions and language courses, but as on date, it is having a limited browser support, which are Edge, Chrome, and Firefox. So this one was the recently re uh, added content type in H H5P library. You can use it for the language teaching. And if the student is not satisfied, you can retry again. Then comes the next content type named Mark the Words. Mark the Words is a content type which can be used to create challenges where the student has to mark specific types of words in a text. Let's say you give them a paragraph and ask them to highlight all the verbs or all the idioms, something like that. Student needs to highlight the words according to the task description and is given a score. You can add as many expressions and the correct words as you like. It is super easy for the teacher to set up since you need to put the correct answer within the asterisks. Like this, click the various type of queries mentioned in the text below. So if the student highlight everything, then he has got five out of seven points and he has missed the two queries. So like that, you can create to mark the word question type. Let's come on to the next one. It is the timeline. A great tool for history teachers and it can be used to create interactive timelines. It allows you to place a sequence of events in a chronological order. For each event, you can add images, text, labels, and everything. You can also include the assets from Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Flickr, Vimeo, Google Maps, or SoundCloud, or any other account also. The timeline may look like this. So next comes the multiple choice, which is widely used content type in H5P activities. That is the most easy to use and effective assessment tool. And the teacher can create challenges where the user has to identify one or more correct choices. The feedback is given immediately after attempting the question. And it can be used for testing well-defined skills related to a certain topic. The sample maybe look like this. The student has to find out the option. And if he is correct, then he will get the feedback, which is quite interactive. So apart from all these 10, I got one more additional content type, which is also beneficial for Moodle teachers. And it is the memory game. The memory game content type allows the teachers to add their own Im images and any optional text to a memory game. As a student, they need to search for the image pairs within the given cards. It can be used to test out the memory of your students. So let's see the example for this one. The cards will be shown like this. If he has selected the correct card, then those will be darkened, darkened out and the currently open card will be the colored image and he needs to find out in the question mark images. 
So these are all the 10 plus 1 content types which are best for Moodle teachers and uh, I hope that uh, you might like to try out H5P with your Moodle after this session and if you have any questions right now you can ask me. So I am done with the presentation. Yes, Vasilis, we can up, uh, create a local Moodle development environment and uh, we can edit the H5P presentations on that environment and then again download and use it anywhere, wherever you want. Uh, just give me a moment. I just need some time to open that and I will... There is an activity type, Janice, uh, you can also use the embed code, but it will not be graded if you, you are using as an embed code. If you are using through the H5P activity module of Moodle, then it will be graded in the gradebook. Yes, Trish, we need the plugin to upload the activity to Moodle until unless we are not grading the activity means if you want to just post the activity it can be embedded through iframe like other videos or any other content wherever the text editor is available So if you have any questions, you can contact me afterwards also through moodleworld.com or you can also contact me on my email ID that is mail -mail at the rate of j-a-s-s-i dot i-n. So now just let me demonstrate it a little bit. Just give me time to open the same. Basically, you can put a grade to any activity created in H5P and when you are creating the Moodle activity in, the, in your course, then you can put a grade for that activity. Let's say you have only a simple presentation where there is no questions and the student has to go through that presentation. Once they watch the presentation, they will get some certain grades out of that. So you can put, let's say, 10 grades for that presentation and once the students are come uh, once the students goes through that presentation then they will get the grades yeah it is a activity module but you can create the questions within the H5P, not in Moodle. Uh, don't worry, I'm all fine with the questions, no problem. Uh, so basically you can create the content of H5P on h5p.org website or you can create the H5P content within your Moodle or you can create the H5P content on your local Moodle development environment, wherever you want to create, it's up to you.
Okay, it's going from the IMO team. Just while we're waiting for more questions, thank you, Jaswinda, for a informative presentation, sort of covering different aspects of HPI5P and what it can do for us. I think it's a new and exciting technology that we can all make use of and help to enhance our courses. So once again, thank you for your time and putting all the effort into the presentation. Thank you very much, Gareth, for giving me <clears throat> opportunity to present among all of you and I'm very pleased to present about this H5P. A big thank you from all of Moodle World team. As of now I am a single person but maybe I will expand it further. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, thank you Paula. I enjoy your presentations. Especially Vasily's useful tips also. Just prior to my presentation, I enjoyed that one. Yeah, thank you, Trish, and thank you, Janice.